Okay, I'm going to go down to a smaller flaker, I'm not use this one here, to see if I can get more narrow flakes on this other side. And that'll also, you know, maintain the thickness because I won't be taking as much off. I don't think I need to turn that edge. Nope. Looks fine. And I might do another pass on this this side, but for now we're gonna go down to a smaller tool. The edge looks it looks like it's in a good position. All right. My little dog's name is Kevin, by the way. My daughter named him Kevin. <laughs> That's so funny. I still, I can't call him Kevin. I have to call him Buddy or something else. I used to call him Snoopy. But she named him Kevin. <laughs> I think it's funny because one of my friends growing up was named Kevin. One of my best friends growing up. Yeah, I'm getting some overshots, it looks like. Yeah, I got a big overshot on that one. The flakes are traveling. Now I'm assuming they did this the pass this way. And not do one flake here and then one flake here and then one flake there. I didn't study the flake pattern very well, so I don't know. They might have done it a different way. They may not have done the whole side all at once. They may have switched sides or alternate sides. And try to get those flakes to meet. But I think if I, even though it's kind of jumbled in the middle, at least it's not going to go past an overshoot. If it's real clear in the middle, I think they tend to overshoot. So I'm just going to stick to this way. Oops. That platform was weak for some reason. And I think, yeah, the base is, the notch at the base was done last. 
because it, it does show on the actual examples that the thinning flakes generated from that notch are overlapping the side flakes. There's too much taken off of that corner there, so I may have to shorten it just to get it to look right. And these Humboldt points were hafted to four shafts that had uh, square bottom notches uh, using the technique that splits out, you know, the four cut technique uh, that you have to split out the sides by, you know, bending it and then you can snap it the other way. So that that notch in the bottom is not catching a V at the bottom of the of the notch in the foreshaft because it's a flat bottom snapped out type okay and the glue they didn't, haven't seen much glue used with these so there you go could be just a very unusual cultural thing that they didn't use a lot of glue just for them or it could be you know a common thing who knows taking some of these basil flakes so I can kind of even out these uh, really lumpy areas and then when I do the basil notch I'll do some more thinning I'm trying to thin this out a little bit yeah okay Yeah, I think I'll be able to drive some good flakes with the once I get the notch in place. Okay. So we're gonna do some damage control on the tip. Because of the overshoot, I'm going to have to redo the tip a little bit. Make sure I stay consistent with the flake pattern. Not like that. So I got a kind of an unusually thick spot there.
Here we go with the overshoots. That one was an early, I didn't see that, but that one was an early overshoot from this flake here. It went all the way across. So I really don't want these flakes to travel too much. That's a bummer. I was hoping to get a wide bottom one on this one. A wide bottom triangular one, but it looks like I'm going to have to do the leaf shape. And try for a triangular one later. I don't know if you can see, but I've got a line of stiff fractures here and a stiff fracture there. But one of the disadvantages of going the same way every time is you can't just send a flake in a different way to try to get rid of it. All these flakes have to go the same direction. Which means they really weren't having trouble with the step fractures. They were experienced enough that they didn't worry about it. Because they were not getting a lot of mistakes. Or not making a lot of mistakes. But if I'm going to fix some of that, I'm going to have to drive some flakes that are not in the correct sequence or correct pattern. Okay, hopefully this is the final pass, hopefully. Even though I am getting used to flaking in that direction, I still feel the need to go in the other direction sometimes 
just to get rid of mistakes. But I'm just going to stay in the same direction. Sometimes I'm using pressure that's enough to create an overshot, but I don't see how else to blow through some of those bumpy areas. take off material from this side. Because it's already flat. Of course, it's not going to cooperate right in the area that I need to remove a flake. That's why random is so much easier. And just because you have a ridge does not really mean that it'll, the flake will follow that ridge all, every time. I'm getting flakes that are expanding into different areas. Need a flake right there.
Okay, hopefully I can get this done in the time. In the time allotted. There goes one of my other dogs trying to get in. Okay, now the base.
I don't know, maybe this is easier to do with Apple tools. We'll see. Okay, let me turn the light on, it's getting kind of dark. Okay, so maybe, maybe I can see this a little bit better. I'm pretty much done with it. You can see the flakes are going in that direction. On this side, not so much, but kind of, sort of. I just can't get a good angle to see those flakes. Let's try putting it in the haft. Still a little thick for this one, for this foreshaft. Anyway, I think that's a proper base. Let's see, I'm running out of time here, but let's see. Let's see if I can quickly get to that page. bookmark anyway okay that's it for this one a little bit different design the basal notch I think is better on this one or more common maybe not better but more common this probably should be a little more rounded not so crude You know scratch so it's kind of dull and some of these were ground on the side but I didn't grind this one okay